Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. This episode is brought to you by MediGeek, one of our newest Patreon patrons. Today, we're continuing the updates on Pocket Camp's first year anniversary or one year anniversary, and we're talking about the sixth anniversary for New Leaf, and we're going to end the show by talking about Animal Crossing crossovers or Animal Crossovers. <laughs> uh, hi, Sergio. How you doing? Hi, Chewie. I'm doing well. What about yourself? I'm doing well. It's been a fun week full of a lot of pocket camp for me. I gotta say, I'm Ooh. playing a lot of it. <laughs> um, but before we get into that, I did. you reminded me that there are Thanksgiving, um, I guess Animal Crossing themed Thanksgiving cards for uh, that are available on my Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So... For anybody who has a My Nintendo account, which if you play Pocket Camp, I recommend it because then you could recover your save data by having one. Right. Um, and I think there's like a 50 leaf ticket reward for free on there. So yeah, My Nintendo, you can have an account. It's I think it's just my.nintendo.com. Yes. Um. Yeah, sorry, I was double-checking that. Yes, my.nintendo.com. But if you head over there and you redeem some points, you can get a special Animal Crossing Thanksgiving Day card. Um, There are four different ones. They're pretty cute. I downloaded them, and I I like them. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, just something to celebrate uh, the day in a couple weeks. Or I guess it's next week, right? Yeah. Mm, Yeah, yeah. Wow, this thing's going to air Tuesday. Like, w- hello, Tuesday. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I feel like my brain's all over the place. But yeah, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. So if you want some good Animal Crossing cards to give out just to people that you celebrate with, they're pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. So yeah, like I said, I'm playing tons of Pocket Camp these days. And it's mostly because they're, I guess... When there are events going, I play more. I tend to just check in once a day if there isn't an event going. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly just to make sure I get the rewards because I want leaf tickets. Right. Um, Even though, I don't know, I guess I've been feeling like leaf tickets, I don't really know if I'm going to spend them. I feel like I'm just hoarding them at this point. Um, I think that's good because you you never know when they're going to put out a special item or... Or a character that you're really going to want. And if you spend them now, you might not have them then. Yeah, exactly. And I think it was good for me to take some time away from the game. Because at this point, I've missed a lot of events. I have um, skipped a lot of items and fortune cookie things. So now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I don't need to get everything in the game, you know? Um, and so now that I'm comfortable with that, I look at the items that are available and I'm like, eh, I don't really want that. I'm just going to save my tickets for something <laughs> else. Um, so yeah, I think, and I was going to buy a terrain, but all the terrains are kind of season locked. So mm. I, I, I really want them to look like it's autumn right now, or if it's winter, I want it to look like it's winter, you know? Right. I don't want my camp to be stuck in one season just because that's what the terrain is locked Mm. in, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyways, that's, at this point, I just don't know what I'm going to spend my leaf tickets on. (laughs) I'm just going to save them and then I'll see what I use them on later. But right now I'm not really interested in too many items. Um, so yeah, anyways, so right now there is, they're continuing the one year anniversary celebration and yesterday or tomorrow for me, yesterday for everybody else who's listening to this, (laughs) the second part or the second celebration is going to happen and it's going to be a scavenger event and Mayor Mori actually posted a good video. He's always, um, up to date on all the latest pocket camp content, Um, so Mayor Mori talked about this and it's essentially, I, I guess I don't remember what the item you're going to be scavenging for. Usually it's like gyroids or something, you know, um, last time it was pokeballs, which was pretty fun. Nice. Uh, I can't tell you how happy I was to just like walk around and find a pokeball (laughs) that I could (laughs) pick up. Um, I only crafted, uh, there were some like premium leaf ticket items. I only crafted a Pokeball to have 
on like my desk somewhere <laughs> nice in my camper uh which i haven't redecorated at all lately but i'm hoping to do that pretty soon um hmm. it just takes me a while like ha- have i told you about how long it takes me to play happy home designer <laughs> when i do <laughs> no it takes me so long because I'm just I'm trying to get the perfect setup for my place or whoever's little home I'm designing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so when that game was out, I would like start a design at night, and then I'd be like taking forever, like an hour or so, and then I'd be oh, like, wow. "Oh, I'm gonna sleep on this design." So then I'll close my game, go to bed, and then I wake up in the morning and I finish it up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and that's how I feel when I decorate my stuff in Pocket Camp. Oh, where, got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in Pocket Camp, I'm like afraid to get into it because I know it's going <laughs> to take me forever. Uh, and yeah, so anyways, <coughs> excuse me. The next goal is I guess we're going to be able to like craft some special outfits out of whatever we collect. Oh. And yeah, they're like New Year's or types of things are like celebratory one year anniversary outfits. One's a tuxedo, another is a fancy dress, and they're okay. <laughs> um, I'm not like a crazy big fan of it, but I'm pretty sure the last two rewards that I want, or I guess the last two achievements that I want to achieve to get two rewards are gonna require me to do those things, you know? Right, right. Yeah, so there's a really cool, like, one-year anniversary pocket camp cake that's going to be mm. the final reward. And I'm like, that. it looks really cute. Nice. <laughs> I, I want a cake like that. It, <laughs> but it's huge, too. Cause, so I'm like, right. you need a lot of people to finish this cake. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but yeah, the, uh, that's what's been going on in pocket camp. I've been having fun with it, I guess. And... I am glad that I took a break and now it's more relaxed and I don't have to stress about, oh, I need to get all these leaf tickets to get all of these fortune cookie items. And yeah, no, I, I don't care anymore. <laughs> right, right. And, and maybe it's it hasn't been as repetitive because like you said, you took a, you took a break. And maybe for, for people that haven't, it might still be getting a little bit samey, but not, not to us, you know. Yeah, but to be fair, like... It is still kind of repetitive. Like, I've done two gardening events since coming back to the game, and I feel like it's been a month, you Mm. know? So it's still kind of the same thing. It's pretty demanding. Um, This gardening event was crazy. Let me tell you. You had to harvest 500 flowers. And so, like, if if you break that down, each cycle, if you harvest every flower gives you 20 new flowers, right? Yes. So you're expected to do 25 cycles, and each of them takes three hours. So that's 75 hours of gardening. Yes. Wow. (laughs) Which, that's pretty crazy if you think (laughs) about it. Um, But of course, you know, they do have the flower food to speed up some of the cycles. But uh, I don't know. It just... it. It's pretty demanding, and it is a lot of repetitive actions over and over again. Right, right. I I definitely don't miss those gardening events, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's not too bad being out of the game, but it, it I've, I've been having fun with it. Like I said, I'm doing it pretty relaxed. I think we have a good community at this point on discord where we're all doing a good job helping each other out and letting everybody have you know some of your creatures that you're trying to catch and give away yeah yeah that's awesome yeah so um i i don't think there was anything else i wanted to cover about pocket camp i'm looking through my notes real quick yeah no i'm just waiting to get that one big uh, a one year anniversary cake because it looks great. I I nice. I want it. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want things like that. Uh, one thing I really liked about uh, New Leaf when it got the Welcome Amiibo update was that you started getting um, pretty much after a year has gone by in your town, there will be another like anniversary celebration. You know. Yes. And so I think you get that town tree model in welcome amiibo oh okay um, 
Do you remember that? Have you done that mm, event yet? I no, I I have not. Yeah, so if you have your town, um, whatever date you started on, it'll keep track of that, of yes. course. And once you hit that date again, you'll have like a one year anniversary celebration and you get the town tree model. So you can put that in your home. Um, one thing I would and maybe this is just like wishful thinking and something they may not think about doing or may not want to do is I it's a town tree. I want it to be like more of a bonsai thing and kind of change every season to. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's Pocket Camp. Let's go ahead and talk about the big thing that's happening, and that is the fact that six years have passed since New Leaf has, um, essentially come out in Japan, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so New Leaf came out, I think it was November, it, it was November 2012 in Japan. Yes. I don't remember the exact day, maybe it was like the 8th or the 12th, um something like that it was early that's right yeah it was early november which okay I'm, I'm gonna go off on a tangent real quick because last week we talked about when animal crossing switch would come out mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure it's gonna be the first half of november by the way <laughs> <laughs> um, but it could be late too just because i think thanksgiving next year is going to be like the very last week of the month. Yes. Um, so it could be like the th three weeks into November, and that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> but because I, I, I don't know. I guess I feel like it's gonna come out in the first half, kind of like Pokemon is this week coming out. Um, yes. It's more like that first half of November, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, um, six years of New Leaf isn't that crazy. Yeah, that is that is crazy. You know, it's been it's been good to have a, such a great game for for so long, but we've been waiting <laughs> equally long for a for a sequel, a proper one. Yeah, and you're making uh, uh, you saying that totally reminds me that this is the longest we have had to wait between Animal Crossing games. Yes. Um, technically. We haven't been waiting too long because last year we got a new Animal Crossing game in the form of Pocket Camp, but come on, mm. that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had two other spinoffs. We've had, in 2015, two games came out, Happy Home Designer and Amiibo Festival, and those don't count either. No. <laughs> um, Happy Home Designer counts more than Amiibo Festival, Yes, though. a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said, I love that game. I'm... I spend a long time uh, on it. Mm. So anyways, um, I, I wrote down some quick notes about uh, release dates for Animal Crossing. So the longest wait, although I just said it w it's six years, the longest <laughs> wait was actually from the date Nintendo was founded in 1889 to the initial release date of Animal Crossing on the N64 in Japan in 2001. So put together, the longest wait was 112 years, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is crazy to think uh, that Nintendo has been around for over 100 years, you know? Yes, that's true. Yeah, so after that, the waits got a lot shorter. <laughs> we have Animal Crossing um, Wild World, which came out four years after population growing. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we have City Folk, which was out three years after Wild World. That's the shortest wait time we've ever had. Yes. And then following that, we, of course, have New Leaf, which really changed things up. And we had another long wait of four years. Um, of course, that was between it, City Folk and New Leaf in Japan. Right. And it was five years for everywhere else. Yes, that's right. So, yeah, that kind of changed things. It was a longer wait, but I also think it was way more worth it. Um, because if we take City Folk with the three years that was between Wild World and City Folk, those two are kind of the same game, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, there there were good updates in City Folk, and overall, I prefer City Folk and really like that game a lot, you know? Yes. Um, but 
I don't know. I think it's worth waiting the extra time. So Nintendo, their team, has enough time to think about new things to put in the game, new art styles to make everything, you know? Um, new items to put in, new characters to make, new, I guess, special characters too, outside of villagers. Um, yeah, so I think New Leaf, it was worth the wait. And now that it's been like six years, I think we're really going to get a great game. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. It was worth the wait. Honestly, though, I wasn't expecting such a long wait again. I really, really thought we were getting a mainline Animal Crossing game on the Wii U, and that just didn't happen. Yeah, that. let's talk about that a little bit, because that was, of course, one of the biggest bummers. And I think the height of that excitement happened in 2015, which, yes. looking back at that day, there was some good... And there was some bad. <laughs> the one good thing was that we were going to get an HD Animal Crossing. The bad thing was it was Amiibo Festival and not exactly what we wanted. No, you know? not at all. Yeah. And I just remember, like, I look back and kind of listen to discussion videos and people talking about Animal Crossing around that time. And it was just like the community as a whole felt it was time for a new game. Um, of course, New Leaf came out in 2012 in Japan, 2013 everywhere else. So 2015 was really only two years after, you know, that would have yes. been the f quickest turnaround time, even quicker than Wild World, the city folk. And I don't know, I think while it would have been great to get a game then, kind of glad it didn't happen because I would rather not just have like another pretty straightforward movement of like here's new leaf but with some minor updates and mm -hmm. um there's not too much new to be excited about you know yeah that's right and you, you mentioned that Animal Crossing fans were really expecting it but I, I also think gaming community as a whole everyone expected animal crossing news in 2015 they were kind of right but you know like you said we didn't get exactly what we wanted yeah of course we did get happy home designer out of that year so yes there was that at least but it, uh, and that was a strange one just because like that was the first time ever we got to experience a spin-off to animal crossing um, mm -hmm. I think it was the most successful of the three that we've gotten so far, yes. too. Yes. Uh, well, agreed. I mean, not monetarily right. successful. Um, it was more than Amiibo Festival, of course, just because, <laughs> yes. you know, the Wii U as a whole was a bummer for a lot of people. <laughs> yes. Um, but regardless, it was successful in terms of like, I felt like it was the most game out of mm -hmm. everything. That's right. And, yeah. So I don't know. Pocket Camp. It, it's doing some good things to change it up. I am really excited to see how they're going to change the game into the future, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it, it over the year that it's been out, I think it has gone over a lot of changes that have really pushed um, more toward that monetary side where Nintendo can feel they're making a lot more money off of the game, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so I guess I worry, too, that it's going to just become more gotcha-style system and less, like, just relax and play Animal Crossing, you know? Yeah, because I, hadn't, I haven't really wondered, but who knows how they're going to coexist with the Switch game, if they are at all. Yeah, that's true. Y oh, you know what? Okay, because hmm. we did get that announcement that, like, they're going to change... What what were the what was their phrasing like the scope of the game? Yes, mm -hmm. with and, an update. Yeah, and you know what? Changing the scope would be like changing it so it has some sort of connection to Animal Crossing on the Switch. You know, true. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure both of those teams are very close and closely knit in the sense of like they're working with the same IP, they're working with the same characters and everything, and. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I feel like they would share ideas between each other and kind of be in talks of, like, how to, how these two games oh. are going to exist together, you know? Right. 
Yeah, so that could be it. Like it could be changing to kind of integrate that kind of uh, play style where it does have some connectivity with the Switch. Um, right. So even if they announce some of the new brand new special characters, they could introduce them in Pocket Camp like as a preview. Yeah, that's really true. Um, mm. Oh, now. Oh, my gosh. I want that. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. OK. So this wasn't written down, but I have a friend who talks to me pretty regularly. Um, he, usually he'll message me on Tuesdays after the podcast has gone up. He listens to it. But he always asks because he doesn't play pocket camp. He asks if he should feel, I guess, worried about not playing pocket camp, you know, um, oh, mm-hmm. like if that. Uh, so I wanted to get from you because I know you have not been playing Pocket Camp for a while. And yes, I don't know. I guess do you plan on playing it too much <laughs> now? Well, I mean, I'm always going to go back if there's anything KK Slider that I can get. But now thinking about this potential connection with the new game, if they do something like that, like a preview, I do see myself not resisting in, in playing again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in that case, like, if, say, there was some new kind of update that's going to be in Pocket Camp related to the Switch, would you feel, like, scared of missing out on that? Mm, Not necessarily. It could also be, um, you know, if if you decide not to do that, it should be fine, because it's like saving everything for the new game on the switch it's like not spoiling even a little bit of it and that's this that's definitely not the wrong way to go okay now alternatively what if if you didn't play and you you missed some like items or special things or like a character that you could only get through pocket camp in um and then to your Mm. switch would you feel like more scared of missing that Mm, yeah, I, I think uh, most Animal Crossing fans are diehard collectors and we would be a little bit upset if there was one item that we couldn't get because we missed out on Pocket Camp. But on, on the same side of that, I wonder if Nintendo would try to avoid that because of that, you know, just to be nice, kind of. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess I wonder how far they would take it just because I know right. part of what makes the gotcha mechanic work is that this is a limited time thing you know um Mm -hmm. it's not something that's going to be around forever and it's like kind of your one chance to do it you know um yeah um uh, that being said i think if they do that it would be very nice and i would expect them to say okay the the time to get these items begins at this date and runs until this date so play pocket can between then and then people should be fine because they, they have been advised, you know, and they they can decide if they want to do it or not. Yeah, that's true. It'd be good to have announcements. And I'm sure we'll, we would keep everybody informed on that, too. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure, because like you said, we, we are diehard collectors. We are playing right. the game to get as much of, as possible out of it, you know. Um, and it's really funny because the other day... Um, I was talking to my Splatoon team and Mm -hmm. they kind of mentioned or one of them asked if any of us collected anything. And my answer was essentially I collect like all of the Animal Crossing Amiibo that come out, you know. Um, Yes. I'm kind of off Amiibo at the moment. Like I told myself I wouldn't try and get like all of the new Smash Bros Amiibo because I was like, I already got all of the ones from the other game, you know? Right. Um, But I am going to get the Isabel one because it's Animal Crossing, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I got to get them all. (laughs) Um, But yeah, outside of that, I was like, it it didn't even occur to me that, yes, I collect furniture. I collect uh, tons of clothing and things in Animal Crossing. Mm. (laughs) Like my collecting (laughs) happens in Animal Crossing where... You know, mm. I bought, I spent $60 to, well, I'm going to spend $60 to buy the new Animal Crossing game, you know? Mm-hmm. And from there, it, like, that that's all the money I need to spend to collect everything I could possibly yes. need. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, I think it's a good way, like, 
if you have found that you kind of need to wean yourself off of collecting regular things just because, I don't know, maybe you're saving up for something. <laughs> maybe you need mm -hmm. you need the money and you can't really go put it toward a collection, you know? Animal Crossing is a good workaround to that. <laughs> that's That's a good point. That's true. Yeah, I remember I got really into Pokemon cards again during the 20th anniversary because they had the special set going on. And at that point, um, I was like, this is pretty addictive. Like, I want to buy Pokemon cards all the time. Right. Every time I go to Target, I go straight to the Pokemon <laughs> stuff and I look at the cards and I'm like, ooh, I want this one shiny. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, no, I I don't need to spend that money right now i'm gonna save it and so <laughs> it, while i was doing that i would watch youtube videos of people opening pokemon cards and that kind of helped wean me off of that <laughs> um i watched primetime pokemon and um unlisted leaf those were my two go-tos very different too <laughs> very different energies <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, primetime is more like if you're really into, I guess, ASMR, which I always forget what it stands for, like audio, sensory, motion. I don't I don't remember. <laughs> so, something like that. I know the A is audio stuff. <laughs> but if you're into that, primetime Pokemon is like pretty great. Hmm. Yeah. I, I used to do impressions of him all the time. Um, <laughs> I think it was like, hey, YouTube. This is prime time Pokemon, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but yeah, he he's a fun guy. But anyways, that's way off topic. Let's get back into Animal Crossing. <laughs> and what you wrote down is pretty interesting. You talked about other series that have had six plus years of wait. Um, so yes. yeah, go over that. <laughs> sure. And a big one that I, I thought of right away in... That's because I remember how long it was a wait between Metroid games. The longest one being six years, again, between Other M for the Wii and Federation Force for the 3DS. Now, this one's interesting because it went from a mainline game that wasn't so well received, even though it wasn't necessarily a, a bad game. Maybe it was just not what people wanted, but again, it was still a mainline game going to a spin-off that definitely nobody wanted and it's it's kind of <laughs> regarded as sort of not, not the worst metroid game but the least wanted metroid game for sure and again that, that was six years now we had another re-release after that and now we're waiting on metroid prime 4 so it seems that metroid is back but it was a wait for six years yeah, that's a long time. And you know what? I have only ever played like little tiny bits of the first Metroid, so I'm mm. not I'm not extremely connected to the franchise, you know. Mm -hmm. But I guess as I learn more and more about it and the games themselves, like I feel more and more interested to play them. But other things I hear is like like you said Other M is not incredibly popular. And right. Federation Force is definitely not popular. <laughs> and so right. it's funny for Metroid fans to have to wait for games, especially that long. And it's the wait has been between two games that just like aren't very well loved. And yes. that's a bummer to me because I'm like, I love every Animal Crossing game. Um, right. Because they've all been really great experiences, you know. But to yes. just wait that long for another disappointed uh, disappointment, uh, mm. I feel for them. It's pretty sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And I've always kind of seen Metroid a, a very similar to Animal Crossing in the term in terms of the fans, because uh, you know neither series is is like as popular as Zelda or Mario, but the fans are kind of loud in terms of in terms of the franchise. In in I see a connection between them and. This six-year wait was another part of that connection, I thought. Now, another one, which was really interesting to me, really crazy. I forgot how long this was. The Smash Brothers series, it was seven years between Melee on the GameCube and Brawl on the Wii. That's a really long time. And then again, another six years between Brawl and Smash 4, I guess, first on the 3DS and then on the Wii U. Those are... You know, those are long times, but again, those are really, really big games also. 
Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Um, Smash Bros. is pretty much, I feel like it's neck and neck with Animal Crossing. Um, I feel like wherever there's a Smash Bros., there's an Animal Crossing. Of course, the Wii U mm -hmm. is the exception to that, but right. I almost don't count it just because Smash 4 was also on the 3DS, which also had an Animal Crossing game, you know? Oh, gotcha. That's true. Uh, so there, there's they feel like they go hand in hand as series yes. as far as like mm -hmm. release dates go. And so Smash Bros has an N64 title. Animal Crossing does as well. But then both were on GameCube. Of course, Smash Melee was on GameCube. So it was a new game. Whereas yes. Animal Crossing kind of a new game in the sense of like they added a lot between the n64 and the gamecube version mm -hmm. and then um both uh the wii yeah we had smash bros brawl and animal crossing city folk and then 3ds had the next games which were yes. smash 4 and new leaf so yeah, I feel like they match up very well together, you know? Mm -hmm. um, one's very, like, action-packed, get a group together to play, and then the other is very much like, all right, let's relax, and but still play <laughs> together, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I think both really have a strong community behind them, a strong sense of, like, people come to play Smash Bros. together, and I feel like people come to play animal crossing together but also alone i don't know it, it's a yeah. it's a mix <laughs> um yeah that's true but yeah that's a long wait seven years between seven. melee and brawl that's longer than we've had for animal crossing at this point yeah yeah that's right yeah in when i was looking at, at these uh, long lead times i thought of mario kart and so i was checking that out and not really the it's actually been very consistent. Mario Kart games come out basically every three years. And the reason for that is because they come out on each Nintendo system. And I wish Animal Crossing was like that. <laughs> you know, a new Animal Crossing every three years sounds kind of perfect. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. That's a good timeline for a new Animal Crossing. Because like I said, I have I played New Leaf for a solid two years straight and then kind of dwindled on the third. Yeah. Um, so at that point, I'm like, yeah, a new game. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, three years would be... Great. Yeah, but then Mario Kart also mm -hmm. really quickly. Like, Mario Kart sells like crazy. It's the best-selling Nintendo game, I think. So, yeah. yeah, you just can't beat Mario Kart. They have <laughs> to put that out every single console they get. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's In... why they're pushing it to mobile now, too. Oh, that's a good point. That's right. Yeah. Nice. Sadly, though, there's one series that... It's been waiting and waiting and waiting, <laughs> and we're talking about F Zero. So, as of right now, it's going on 14 years since without the game. The last one was in 2004, and that was only in Japan. Actually, it was a Game Boy Advance game that never made its way outside of Japan. And I don't know what happened. Nintendo just forgot or decided not to keep going with F Zero, which it's disappointing. I get it because Mario Kart is more popular, but it, I think they're very different. They could coexist. Yeah, and uh, I was just saying, like, Mario Kart sells like crazy. And <laughs> I think Nintendo, I don't know, they, they kind of have gone this route with Paper Mario, where Paper Mario was very RPG-based, and, you know, people really love those first two games because of it. Yes. But it seems like Nintendo has committed their... Our, rpg style mario to be uh, mario and luigi you know yeah and i feel like f-zero kind of falls into that where like nintendo's like let's just have our racer be mario kart because people love mario kart you know mm -hmm. um but i think i don't know when we're gonna see a new a full new mario kart game we of course got a port of mario kart 8 to the switch and so I guess I kind of wonder if because of the DLC for Mario Kart 8, where we got Animal Crossing characters as playable characters, Link as a playable character, mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if that series is going to move 
toward that more Nintendo cart feel where they add a bunch of different Nintendo characters. Because if that were the case, like there's clearly Captain Falcon is a clear choice to put into a Mario Kart game. Right. right. And be just in that game, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. 14 years is a really long time. And that's the amount of time where I just don't think they're thinking about that game at all or that series at all. <laughs> right, right. There was some hope. Um, I'm just remembering this, but uh, in Nintendo Land, there was an F Zero attraction, and that was in 2012. But nothing really came of that. I remember. We know, of course, that Animal Crossing was also part of that, and that's why it gave me hope that we were getting an Animal Crossing mainline game on the Wii U. But neither of those came to be. Honestly, there were so many clues for an Animal Crossing (laughs) mainline game on the Wii U, and I can't believe we got it still. Like, there was the Animal Crossing Plaza, which I just tried to download before this, Ah, but I I can't because I didn't ever own it, unfortunately. Mm. Um, Then there was the Nintendo Land attraction. There was Amiibo Festival. There was just so much in the game that pointed toward the team already having HD assets for a lot of what would have been in an HD Animal Crossing game, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. There were tons and tons and tons of clues, but I chalk it up to just being like Nintendo abandoning the Wii U very early on. Mm. Um, I think at maybe year two or something, they realized they'd made a mistake this system was not going to do very well. It wasn't, there was no way to make a recovery on it. Mm-hmm. And so any big thing that they were planning for it just had to be moved, you know? Yeah. And one of those things we kept seeing delayed year after year, it was Zelda. Yeah. And I promise you that most of the reason was to just have a simultaneous release on the Wii U and the Switch. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing, Mario came out so soon after that, they had to have been working on it for the Wii U. Mm. And then just were like, nope, we haven't said (laughs) anything about this game. We're just going to keep it a secret for the next console, you know? Right, right. That's the only way I could feel they could put out both a Zelda and Mario game at the same year, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's true. And with those points, I mean, it it is sad in a way, but it seems like sort of pulling the plug on the Wii U early was the right thing to do. Yeah, because now we're going to get a system with lots of great things. And one of the things that excites me about that is I feel a lot... uh, Already more people have bought the Switch than the Wii U. We're going to have way more people to play Animal Crossing with when the game comes out, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Just this morning, uh, somebody mentioned how exciting it is going to be to play animal crossing with everybody in the discord Mm -hmm. and yes that's really exciting i'm so excited for that Um, yeah that's gonna be awesome yeah i remember you chimed in just really quickly to say yes that's great (laughs) (laughs) so i don't know it's gonna be really awesome and like i said six we got a lot of really great things from a five-year wait for animal crossing new leaf Mm -hmm. six years is gonna be great too um yeah so i i think it's safe to i guess just assume we're gonna have the best animal crossing on our hands i think yeah yeah that's right yeah that's a lot of time to make plans (laughs) yeah yeah so uh did you have anything else to say about the wait and i guess six years of new leaf no that's about it just one little note that you know, we talked about series that we're waiting for a really long time. Those were years without nothing at all. You know, at least these six years, we had a couple of spin-offs. Some were good, some were not so good, but we had something. And the wait is almost over. 2019 is the year. Yeah, that's true. We did have like a lot of little bite-sized chunks to help us wait. Um, yeah. The game came out for us 2013. We got two new side titles in 2015. The Welcome Amiibo update in 2016 and Pocket Camp in 2017. Mm -hmm. So 
right now it's been one year, a one year gap since the last like major ish kind of Animal Crossing thing. Yes. Um, uh, at least uh, the a major release, you know. Right. So, but uh, because we have gotten an announcement at this point, and that's that's huge. That's the biggest yeah. thing that could happen. In in Isabel in Smash, it's it's remarkable. Yeah, that's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> I'm really yeah. really excited yeah. about that. <laughs> uh, she's my new main. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So speaking about Isabel in Smash, we're gonna go ahead and get into Animal Crossovers. Uh, <laughs> which is, you know, it's just so easy to combine the two yeah. words. <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about things that Animal Crossing has crossed over with because I think Animal Crossing population growing was pretty iconic for a lot of people just because it had a lot of NES games inside of it. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you could get an NES game, place that in your home, and then play other Nintendo games in your Nintendo game. <laughs> I always think of a picture where it's like, yo, I heard you like Nintendo games. So I put Nintendo <laughs> games in your Nintendo games. So you could play nice. Nintendo games while you're playing Nintendo games. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's just the type of Inception meta thing that they've got going on. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's go over some of these. So the first ones we've got are... Of course, Nintendo-themed items. I've mentioned the NES games, but we've also gotten things like clothing. Um, Mm -hmm. I remember one of the big things for me in Wild World, uh, and for sure for a lot of people, was that we could finally change our hats. Um, And (laughs) one of the hats that you could get was the Big Bro hat, which was Mario's iconic hat that he wears right and then there was also the Lil bro hat which was luigi's hat (laughs) and those were too cute you know right Um, right did you get any other clothing uh or did you like the clothing and stuff that came out in the game yeah for sure in in the 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 most iconic to me were the ones in new leaf but you know we've been having i guess mostly mario side of things but they've definitely been part of animal crossing for longer Yeah, and you know what? Now that you've mentioned it, I totally remember that first major trailer we got where the character at the very end of the trailer starts changing their clothing and they change their shoes, they change their pants, they change their shirt. I was going to say tunic to give you a hint, (laughs) but they're changing into Link, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was awesome. I think so many people were pumped to see that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always fun to see other franchises represented in the game that you're playing, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so also you mentioned New Leaf. There were the fortune cookies, um, which I started to hate after a while just because I went to Comic-Con. I got so many Street Pass people and... Every home I went into had a room full of the fortune cookie and Nintendo <laughs> items. And I was just like, come on, you guys. <laughs> I don't want to see this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the last one I had here listed were the campers. Um, because we could scan in other, I guess, amiibo, like the Zelda ones. And you could get like Ganon, um, who came up as like the pig Ganon, you know. You yes. had Callie and Marie from Splatoon. You had Epona, Medley, um, so many like special characters that only existed through those other franchise amiibo. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I can think of on that. The next one, mm-hmm. you want to cover this one? Yes, and we we kind of touched on it earlier in the in this episode. We talked about Mario Kart and. Of course, we have the best track of all time, the Animal Crossing with four seasons, basically four different versions of the track, and they all have amazing music. They're four different so, tracks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love them. Right. And almost maybe better, we have Villager and Isabel as racers, playable characters. That I have literally not played as any other character since that DLC came out. <laughs> Nice. I have always played as Villager, and I should play as Isabel more because she's cute. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the track the- is so beautiful. I think as soon as I saw that track in Mario Kart, I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to wait as long as it takes for your for Animal Crossing to look like that. <laughs> right, exactly. Give me that, and I'm a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was truly amazing. Um, I think you wrote this stuff down, too. So you want to cover the Super Smash Bros. things? Yes, definitely. And... More Animal Crossover with the Super Smash Brothers series. We have a few items like the Pitfall. That's kind of how things got started. Of course, there were trophies at first, introducing the Smash Brothers players to what was Animal Crossing. That's a that was a a cool little side note also. And of course, there were stages in each of them with their music. Like the very first one was Smashville in a Brawl for the Wii, and also Town and City. And then Tortimer Island in the more recent games for the Wii U and the 3DS. And I believe all of those are coming over for Smash Ultimate on the Switch, which is cool. <laughs> then, of course, we had Villager added in Smash Brothers 4, basically, as a playable character. And now we have Isabel coming in December. She's awesome. Yeah, I like these things because I remember Smashville was added in Brawl. And yes. I think... The one sad thing about playing Smash a lot is that I feel after a while it just kind of turns into 1v1 Final Destination no items kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> but I think what I loved about Brawl was, or well, specifically Smashville in Brawl was that people were okay with that stage <laughs> because it yeah. was like Final Destination, just like a flat kind of surface and there was just like one platform moving back and forth um and there wasn't really any i guess hazard that was getting in the way of a regular match and so i was like yes i don't have to just watch space this whole time i can go and look at city (laughs) pool right (laughs) for a little while right right um so i always really appreciated that level for it being like pretty simple and I guess more likable than a lot of stages for people. Um, yeah, and then, that's true. And I, I just wonder if there's any Smash players that are also Animal Crossing fans that, that haven't played Smashville on a Saturday at 8 p.m. and seen KK Slider, which is amazing. Yeah, that is a, such a great touch by that team. I'm so <laughs> glad they added that because... It's just not a Saturday night without a KK Slider concert, you know? Right. It, yeah, I don't even know what a Saturday night is <laughs> if it weren't for that. Um, and also, Villager, I was so excited to see Villager added to the game. Um, I remember when the demo came out for Super Smash Bros. 4, it was on the 3DS, and luckily yes. they allowed Villager to be one of those characters we can try out. And I was... So, so, so excited. And they're such a hard character to use, but I worked hard yeah. to be good as them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And then Isabel, it's going to be so fun seeing Isabel in the game, too. But it's also going to be a bit strange because they're not the same, like, character models. Yeah. 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 So I wonder how I'll feel about that at first. <laughs> nice. I- I'm looking forward to it. You know, more more characters to try out and, and like you said they're slightly different so it should be cool yeah it's gonna be great um the next one is the Mies, and these were added in city folk and new leaf but of course it wasn't mm-hmm. the full Mies; it was just like a creepy me mask that you put on <laughs> um i remember oh my gosh i tried this and i was just like i don't look right I do not look okay. <laughs> I'm not okay with this. I'm taking it off forever. <laughs> right. I I I can barely count how many me mask wearing characters I've seen. Very, very few. Yeah, nobody ever does it because as soon as you do, <laughs> you regret it. It is so scary. <laughs> right. Uh I I don't even I guess I kind of forgot it was in New Leaf too. I mostly mm-hmm. remembered being scarred in it in City Folk. I was just scarred. And then <laughs> New Leaf, I was like, I'm going to get it just because I'm a completionist, but I'm never wearing this again. No. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it's creepy. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. But I also like it. It it wouldn't be the same without it. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yeah. Um the next one was Sanrio. So Hello Kitty fans, you got your own blend of Hello Kitty plus Animal Crossing. Um a bunch of different Sanrio characters showed up as a special amiibo card set and mm-hmm. th- this is uh, this is my biggest regret on the list by far. And it's the fact that I didn't buy a pack when it was like 20 bucks for a pack. I was like, right, wow, that's right. so much. I'm just going to wait for them to come to the U.S. <laughs> Silly me. What a mistake <laughs> I have made. Because now, I don't know if you've looked it up, but I did. And I think it costs like 150 bucks to get a full right. set of these cards. Like there's six of them. Jeez. Six cards cost as much as one and a half sets of the other amiibo uh sets you know yeah um Mm -hmm. that's it's so much money and (laughs) i wish i just went 20 bucks that's great yeah i'm getting it now (laughs) if only i had known (laughs) right right yeah so uh for those who don't know i have every amiibo card Except for the Sanrio set and the special Japanese-only cards, which were a CP KK Slider and CP Isabel. Mm-hmm. And don't ask me what the CP stands for. I don't know. That's no. just the special <laughs> marking to distinguish it on the card. <laughs> Other than that, I don't have those either. And those are... I Well, to be fair, I do have one of the Sanrio cards. Right. It's in Japanese. One of my friends was so kind to send it to me. She had an extra. She lives in Brazil. <laughs> so <laughs> she even spent good money to get it to me. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, she gave me a card. But I also hooked her up with some really good Welcome Amiibo car- uh, packs. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, so I-, I sold them to her for cheap. So mm. I feel like I deserve that Sanrio card. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah, but it's such a bummer to see them never make it to the US, you know? Yeah, now we know. I mean, sad to say now we know, but it's true. If there's any like little crossover that is doesn't seem like it could come over to the rest of the world, we should be on it. (laughs) Yeah, now yeah, you're totally right. Like in the future, I'm not just gonna guess that it's gonna come out here. I'm gonna just buy it import it (laughs) because honestly like it's not coming (laughs) yeah (laughs) now that i know nintendo they're not bringing it over here (laughs) Um, yeah so yeah that's a warning for everybody who doesn't live in a certain region that gets certain things um for example did we ever get that uh special animal crossing 2ds no no the green one the awesome looking one no we have not that's bogus it's so yeah. it looks so good. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense that why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's adorable. I've seen an unboxing of it done by Emily with two E's on our channel. Yes. She did a great job. It looks like such a great console. Um check it out if you haven't and yeah, I we just can't trust Nintendo to bring every all the good stuff no. to everywhere. That's right. (laughs) That's the moral of the story, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) All right. The next thing that we had a crossover for, uh, I love this one. It is the weirdest (laughs) thing in the whole wide world, but it is the 7-Eleven crossover with Animal Crossing. And this one happened pretty early on in New Leaf, but we got special 7-Eleven items and... We didn't get them exactly, at least here in the States. It was only right. available in Japan. And so you had to go to a 7-Eleven in Japan to download the special 7-Eleven items. <laughs> and they're so weird. I have the set um, just because, you know, uh, you can trade with people online. That's a thing. Nice. For mm-hmm. at least in-game items. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's a weird set. I don't. I don't really remember why they did it. <laughs> I wonder if there's a reason why. Yeah. I know it must have hmm. been like when 7-Eleven became like a Japan owned company. Mm. And so they're like, oh, yeah, cool. You, We should do something about this. Uh, I've got an idea. 
let's put our items in Animal Crossing so people can make their own Seven <laughs> Eleven stores in Animal Crossing. It, right. It's weird. Fun fact about me: I worked at a Seven Eleven during the summers in college. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so weird connection. <laughs> it's just a weird nice. place. It's as weird a place as it is an item in Animal Crossing. <laughs> Um, and then finally, we have some Pocket Camp crossovers, and there have been some Mario Bros. crossovers, Splatoon 2 crossovers, and Pokemon. And I guess what's fun about these, I, I we always have Mario in, representation in Animal Crossing. Yes. So I, I think that one was an easy go-to to start. Right. <laughs> Splatoon 2, I think, is a fun one just because, you know, the two games are pretty closely related just because of how much of the team moved on from Animal Crossing to Splatoon 2, you know? Yes. But mm -hmm. I think the big one here has to be Pokemon. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can't think of a single time that Pokemon had some representation in Animal Crossing. Can you? No. And I was so tempted to go back to Pocket Camp. I saw the... The Eevee outfit for the character. And I was I want that. I really want that. Yeah, and it's a onesie. And it's the first time <laughs> ever that we've had a onesie type of thing. And so th this gets me really excited for the next game. Because I'm just like, I want onesies in the next game. <laughs> yes, please. Come on. Sign right. me up. Um, so, yeah, that that's really cool. But, yeah, the Pokemon stuff. For the longest time, I thought... Pokemon did have representation in City Folk because at some point Ash's cap from Pokemon showed up in my store in City Folk. Um, I found out later mm. that would happen if you played with somebody who was a hacker. And so... Oh, really? Yeah, so it like kind of put that, that data into your game with the Ash's cap. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I saw that show up and I was like, Whoa, I can wear Ash's hat now? That's cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, outside of that, there hasn't been like any official Pokemon representation. Right. And, you know, it makes sense for Pocket Camp to take some liberties and, and go a little more trigger happy with um, crossovers. And I expect more to come. There, there's probably going to be Zelda and who knows what other Nintendo ones or even beyond. And, and I think that's really cool, but... Definitely the big one so far has been Pokemon because a lot of us Animal Crossing fans had always wondered how could Pokemon and Animal Crossing come together in, into like a spin-off game or, or Pokemon aspects in Animal Crossing and, and they just kind of go hand in hand together so well. Yeah, and I've mentioned this before, but I feel like a lot of the audiences for those games, like there's just a lot of crossover. A lot of people who love Pokemon love Animal Crossing. And a lot of people who yes. love Animal Crossing love Pokemon. Like, it, mm -hmm. it, it just makes sense to have the two out together. And I don't know. I guess th that makes me think of, like, what next year is going to be like with both Animal Crossing and Pokemon slated for them. Ooh. It's going to be a big year, you know? <laughs> it's going it, to... I keep looking at the lineup of games for next year, and I'm just like, this is the greatest year in gaming history for me like <laughs> all of my favorite things are getting coming out we've got animal crossing of course but on top of that we've got a new pokemon new fire emblem new yoshi so many things that i'm just like yes give me more of that yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah the pokemon stuff it like i said it's super fun i did skip out on some of the premium items but I could not skip out on buying a Pokeball for my camper. <laughs> of course, I need right. one. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think it, you mentioned a little bit earlier about, like, Pocket Camp kind of pumping out things. And I think that's the easiest game to do kind of like this gotcha mechanic thing. Because, like, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. new Nintendo game that's going to come out, it can have some representation in Pocket <laughs> Camp. Like, they can just stick things right. in there, you know? Right, right. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess I'm expecting some sort of just future. I don't know. They're, they'll probably have like some Yoshi events right before um, Crafted World is coming out. Ooh, yes. And that would be great. It would be so cute, you know? 
Uh, yeah. Just because, like, the craft-like style of that game, it looks really good. And I think it would look great in Animal Crossing, too, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like any new, I guess, Nintendo IP that comes out from here on out, I think it's going to be an easy thing for Nintendo to be like, well, we need something to sell with Leaf tickets. <laughs> How about, oh, Yoshi's coming out. Let's put that in there. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, it's an easy game to do that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I also want to see something Labo-related in Pocket Camp. Yeah, that would be fun. I'm, not, I'm surprised yeah. they haven't done that yet. Uh, there have <laughs> been some cool things. But I think this might be something that they're just, like, barely catching up onto. Because, like, yes. mm-hmm. like I said, the Splatoon 2 thing was very cool. But it was also pretty recent, like it wasn't too long ago. And so right. I think now they're going to be start uh, be thinking about how they can put other games into Animal Crossing. Because I think it's all, uh, Animal Crossing has always had that in it. With the NES games from the first game, like it's yeah. always been easy to show uh, or at least put out items that represent other franchises. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, anyways, let's get into the final part of the show, and we're going to talk Haken's Villager Corner. This week's question was Do you think Animal Crossing Switch will be released before or after October 22nd, 2019? And for those of you just tuning in for the first time, last week Sergio and I talked about what is going to happen. Well, I guess we kind of just guessed what could happen with Animal Crossing between now and our 100th episode we made an estimate that our 100th episode would fall on october 22nd 2019 so yeah i guess um i was interested to hear from our haken villagers what they thought um so Mm -hmm. do you want to go back and forth on this again yes definitely okay then i will start emily says I definitely think it will be released before October 2019. I see it being released around the same time New Leaf got released in Europe, possibly just after E3. Nintendo did say that they didn't want to have a long wait time between releases, and I know there have been exceptions, but I think they know how anticipated this release is, and they wouldn't want to risk it being delayed or make us wait too long. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I think... I've praised Nintendo for this in the past, but I really appreciate that they have had short um, release waits, you know? Um, yes. They'll announce mm-hmm. something, and then pretty soon it's out, and we can play it. So, yeah, I think that's a fair argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely some good points. And, you know, Emily even noted that there's been some exceptions, but we'll see. It, it's it's going to be very interesting. But, okay, so... Her vote is for before October. <laughs> now, the next uh, the, the next answer is by Sam Shine, and he says, This could be wishful thinking, but I'm hoping for a June release. I have grandiose plans of getting an Animal Crossing Switch bundle set and then enjoying the rest of my birthday month crossing those animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's going to have a good time. Um, I... I'm excited to hear that people are waiting for an Animal Crossing specific Switch bundle um, because I I feel like those types of purchases just send Nintendo a message, you know, and the yes. message mm-hmm. is we buy Animal Crossing things, <laughs> give us more Animal Crossing things and we'll be happy. <laughs> right. But yeah, it seems like Sam Shine, she's also thinking it's going to be before October 22nd, more of a June type of release. And right. Yeah. I mean, I, of course, think it's coming November, you know, um, so I've said that. But yes, <laughs> I do. I do find the arguments for like late June or July pretty good. Like I, I could believe them, you know, mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. a good guess from people. <laughs> yes. Um, So Grizzly Nina says, I'm terrible with predictions like this. I will be ecstatic if those Q1, Q2 rumors are true and the game is released before fall. Where did those rumors get started anyway? But my (laughs) expectations are very low. Games often get delayed and I'll just be happy if there is actually a 2019 release. (laughs) I like 
where she's going with this just because mm-hmm. I feel like we've all been really used to games getting delayed, you know? So coming from yes. that perspective where it's like, yeah, you know, it could just get delayed. We don't have to get it 2019. It's happened before. <laughs> Right, right. So I think that's fair. And just as a reminder, these rumors did get started by, I believe, Pixel Par, who has, um, we've covered their stuff before just because they actually were ones to point out that anim- the Animal Crossing website had changed. Like there was a new section mm. with a bunch of non news things, it was just more of a template, you know? Yes, And so mm-hmm. they were the people who pointed that out. But they're also the ones to say that Animal Crossing could be coming in Q1. And I've listened to their own podcast. I think it's called Potscast, P-O-T-S-T as in tacos. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, Potscast, they've mentioned that and they seem to stick by it. Like they really think it's coming early next year versus mm. later in the year. Um so, yeah, they're the ones who that rumor is from. So you can blame them for getting everybody hyped. <laughs> right. And not us. We're just, we're the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to think about Animal Crossing getting delayed. I know it's a possibility. I'm not thinking about it. Yeah, it, it's better not to. I That's why I, I'm in the boat where I just think it's coming late in the year. Right. So I'm like. Yeah, t- they said 2019. I'm holding them. Too. Yeah, that's when it has to come. <laughs> that's the fair thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Emily, but this one with two E's. And she says, I think it's going to be July 2019, pretty much a little after the halfway year point. I think starting in summer is perfect. It gives you enough time to get your town together before holiday season. But I also don't believe it will be the same month as newly. Plus, my birthday is in July. It would be the perfect birthday gift. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a, a lot of summer wishes for Animal Crossing. Yeah, a lot of people want summer. But also, I, I'm saying, like, July 26th is a pretty good date for Animal Crossing. Not going to say it's around my birthday, but it might be around my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would not mind at all. <laughs> nice. Um, so Dragonflame323 says, I'm feeling summer. So my strict answer is before October 2019. If it doesn't come out in summer, I'll predict it to come out November or December 2019, a year from now. And yeah, I guess, like you said, Sergio, a lot of people are really hoping for a summer release for this game. Yeah, and we have New Leaf to thank for that. It it was the the precedent and, you know, it's the last game. It's going to be five or it's going to be six years since we had it and that was a summer game, and it, it was perfect timing, so it definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it makes sense. Like, uh, me arguing for summer, I would say we've gotten two spring announcements in Yoshi and Fire Emblem, and the other two announcements we've gotten, which are Animal Crossing and Luigi's Mansion, like, it, it would make sense for them to be more of, like, the summerish time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Of course, Luigi's Mansion, I feel like he can't pass up an October release date. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. But, you know, it just makes sense to think of games coming out relatively in order of their announcement. So those first two mm-hmm. announcements we've, of course, got before Animal Crossing. But Animal Crossing is kind of the next thing. So you could say it's going to fall right after spring, you know? Right. So, right. I like I said, I think that's a fair argument. I think... I mean, you don't need to be super uh, logical with it, but if you are, like, there's some thing, some ways you can <laughs> say it'll happen. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Next, we have Dazed House, and she says, definitely, I'm leaning towards a springtime release. I don't have any data or logic to support this. Just feels. <laughs> I like that That's answer. early. <laughs> yeah, so springtime, that is, like I said, podcast um if you go and listen i forget which episode it is they only have like five episodes or so of their podcast right now Mm. um and i think it might be episode two where they talk about it but yeah they're they're really i guess hanging on to that initial q1 release time for the game 
Um, mm. It would be surprising, but Nintendo likes to surprise. It could happen. Yeah, yeah. I think my only... Ha- or, I don't know. I, like I said, I have hesitations about putting <laughs> my heart so early in the year. Um, but I think also, like, if it's going to be, be springtime, like... Why not mention it at E3 last year? Like I said it was going to. Yeah. Or at yeah. least like I thought it was going to. I just feel like E3 would have made more sense for that type of announcement. Um, and also E3 like turned into such a weird show just because it felt like there wasn't too much new to get announced. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's a weird time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, Infinite Mallet says... June is the earliest I'd be willing to bet on, but my gut says it'll be fall or later. If I had to make a specific guess, I'll say that it will actually come out on the week of your 100th episode, and you guys can use that episode to talk about your plans for launch day. As an added bonus, that week will also have my birthday in it. (laughs) Oh, nice. Well, there we go. That's a good time for it to come out. (laughs) Right, and we did joke about that. Like, what if it does come out around... The 100th episode. That would be crazy timing. We would definitely make a really huge deal about that. Yeah, I think we'd have to do so many lives. There's so many, so many events <laughs> that we would have to do. Um, live reactions to things. Uh, just playing the game for the first time. Doing... Oh, I, I just can't wait. It's going to be so oh. fun. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be really so much to cover that week. I'm glad you're taking your vacation then. <laughs> oh for sure for sure yeah and one last thing to note if if the game does come out let's say before june it's gonna come out it, if, if that's the case it's gonna come out before e3 2019 and that means that it's gonna be an animal crossing game that doesn't really take part of e3 and that's crazy i i cannot imagine i, I mean all the other animal crossings have been a part of e3 and it's a it's a good game to show at e3 so i i and I just don't see that. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think it is a good game to show at E3 just because I always hear like people say Animal Crossing doesn't demo well. It's not a good game to show. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, like they don't have to have a demo. Like they could just show us some right. cool trailers, some cool gameplay, treehouse coverage, you know? Um, yes. I remember 2015, though we didn't get the Animal Crossing game we wanted, we got great coverage about Animal Crossing at that <laughs> event. That's true. Um, that's true. And that's I, I really appreciated seeing the team like also geeking out on the game that I love. And right. so, yeah, I think it's going to be really fun to have that game have some sort of presence at E3. And so, yeah, I just feel like it's weird to not have it there, you know? Right. Right. And skip it completely. Because then I go back to what I was saying earlier. Why not show it at E3 2018? Like, right. Exactly. That's weird to me. That uh, It just doesn't make <laughs> sense. So, I don't know. I don't know. But I had my hopes up for the announcement then. But, you know, I, I, who's complaining? We have it now. So, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to be sad about. Um, so yeah, anything else to say about anything we talked about on the show? No, sounds good. We, like you said, we have the year 2019. We're holding Nintendo to it. We don't want any delays. We don't, we don't even want to think about it. Yes. 2019 is the year. Yeah. We've had so few delays at this point. Um, some people would say Fire Emblem, other, and for sure Yoshi was delayed. You know, that's a strange one. But yeah. Yeah. So, you know, not too many delays. So I'm hoping Nintendo keeps strong. They keep working hard, but not too hard. I don't want them to be overworked, of course. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I just hope they're having fun making a game that a lot of people are going to love. Yes. So thank you all so much for listening. If you want to be part of the conversation on all things Animal Crossing, join the Discord. I have a link in the description of this podcast. It's totally free to join. You don't have to be a patron. And if you do join, you can get Sergio and my friend codes. If you do want to become a patron, visit patreon.com slash Chewy Plays Nintendo. For just a dollar, you can support our show and get tons of cool things. And you get to participate in these Haken's Villager Corners. So if you like that, 
that is your ticket in and like i said it's all optional i'm trying to work in some more free things for people and hopefully i can get those planned out a little better soon but for now if you do want to support totally welcome we're always trying to make it worth it for you because we really appreciate the support. It's been so awesome meeting everybody and getting all this love. <laughs> and if you yes. are watching or listening on YouTube, please leave a comment on when you think Animal Crossing Switch is coming. Is it before October or is it after October? Let me know. A lot of people seem to not agree with my after October thing. That's fine. <laughs> totally fine. I would gladly be wrong <laughs> yes right <laughs> and please 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 leave a review of the show wherever you're listening it helps the show gain some visibility allows our community to grow and just gets uh, our podcast to more animal crossing fans it's always really exciting to hear people come into the discord and say this is awesome i finally have somebody to talk about animal crossing with yeah <laughs> we're we're trying nice. to be those people because we do this all the time <laughs> yes and once again thank you so much for listening and we hope you have a great week goodbye everybody